गूगल अपने यूजर्स को कई नए फीचर्स की सुविधाएं देने जा रहा है आईओ 2017 के लॉन्चिंग प्रोग्राम पर गूगल के सीईओ सुंदर पिचाई ने इसका ऐलान किया किन किन चीजों का ऐलान किया है सुंदर पिचाई ने चलिए वो आपको सुनाते हैं वेलकम टू गूगल आईओ दैट्स बिकॉज वी बीन फोकस्ड एवर मोर ऑन आर कोर मिशन ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द वर्ल्ड इंफॉर्मेशन and we are doing it for everyone and we approach it by applying deep computer science so the scale is inspiring to see and there are other products approaching the scale we launched google drive 5 years ago and today it is over 800 million monthly active users and every single week there are over 3 billion objects uploaded to google drive but computing is evolving again We spoke last year about this important shift in computing from a mobile first to a AI first approach. Or if you're using Google Maps, Street View automatically recognizes restaurant signs, street signs using machine learning. Do but thanks to deep learning, we use a technique called neural beam forming. We were able to ship it with just two microphones and achieve the same quality. And so today we are announcing a new initiative called Google Lens. we'll ship it first in google assistant and photos and i'll come to other products so how does it work so for example if you run into something and you want to know what it is say a flower you can invoke google lens from your assistant point your phone at it and we can tell you what flower it is now that we are evolving uh, for this machine learning and ai world we are rethinking our computational architecture again Last year's TPU software optimized for inference. Training is computationally very intensive. To give you a sense, each one of our machine translation models takes a training of uh, over 3 billion words. So cloud TPUs are coming to Google Compute Engine as of today. <laughs> Painstaking effort of a few engineers and scientists, mainly machine learning PhDs. So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? We call this approach auto ML. So we actually use a neural net to iterate through them till we arrive at the best neural net. We use a reinforcement learning approach. And so whenever I spend time with the team and think about neural nets building their own neural nets, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies Inception. And I tell them we must go deeper. across a wide range of disciplines one such area is healthcare so we built neural nets to detect cancer spreading to adjacent lymph nodes it's early days but our neural nets show a much higher degree of accuracy 89% compared to previous methods of 73% reducing errors is important applications we can more accurately identify whether or not a patient has genetic disease and can help with better diagnosis and treatment. Cart and team are going to talk more about it, but before that, let's take a look at the many amazing ways people have been using the Google Assistant. The new Google Assistant SDK allows any device manufacturer to easily build the Google Assistant into whatever they're building. So now, of course, you can ask your assistant to get all sorts of answers from Google search. But beyond finding information, users are also asking the assistant to do all sorts of things for them. Hi, how can I help? I'd like delivery from Panera. Hi, this is Panera. I'll need your delivery address. Which one can I get from Google? Since launch we've added 50 new features, including some of my favorites, like the support for Google Shopping, where I can use my voice to order items from Costco right to my front door. And we do this by understanding the context of your daily life. and proactively looking for that really helpful information and providing it for you in a hands-free way. So for example, let's say I'm relaxing and playing a game with the kids. Well, I can see that the Google Home lights just turned on. Hey, we'll connect you. You can call any landline or mobile number in the US or Canada completely free. And it's all done in a hands-free way. For okay, finally, I want to talk a little bit how we see the assistant evolving to help you in a more visual way. Voice responses are great. but sometimes the picture is worth a thousand words. So today we're announcing support for visual responses with Google Home. For example, 
I can now say, OK, Google, show my calendar for Saturday. Showing it on your TV. It'll show up right on the TV screen. I'll immediately get results from the assistant. Simply type Anil Pineapple Hawaii and instantly find this gem. <laughs> Google Photos will give you an album curated with only the best shots, removing duplicates and blurry images. We're announcing suggested sharing. Because we've all been there, right? Like when you're taking that group photo and you insist that it be taken with your camera, because you know if it's not on your camera, you are never seeing that photo ever again. <laughs> now, for example, I would love it if every photo I ever took of my kids was automatically shared with my wife. <laughs> Let me show you how it works. So here, we're now looking at my Google Photos account. From the menu, I now have the option to go ahead and share my library, which I'm gonna go ahead and do with my wife, Jess. But because I shared my entire library with her, I can simply go to the menu, and Jess can now see all the photos, including the one with all of you. So YouTube is different from traditional media in a number of ways. First of all, YouTube is open. And we've seen in our numbers that users really want to engage with this type of diverse content. We are proud that last year, we passed a billion hours a day being watched on YouTube. And our viewership is not slowing down. Second, our recommendations build channels and lineups based on your personal interests and what you enjoy watching. Now, one of my personal interests outside of work is to travel. And one place I'd love to visit is Alaska to check out the Northern Lights. So let's do a voice search. That's why earlier this year, we rolled out a new feature called Super Chat. So that 360 living room demo and the Super Chat demo, those are just two examples of how we are working to connect people around the globe together with video. As you can see, we found some new ways to hardware accelerate Android, this time with Jetpacks. Uh, but seriously, 2 billion active devices is incredible. And that's just smartphones and tablets. And there are more than 3,000 Android TV apps in the Play Store. This year, we're releasing a brand new launcher interface and bringing the Google Assistant to Android TV. Android users installed a staggering 82 billion apps and games in the past year. But there are still certain things that are tough to do in a small screen. So we're doing a couple of features in O that we think will help with this. We think picture-in-picture -picture is the answer for many cases. So let's take a look. So I opened up YouTube, and I started researching DIY videos, and I found this one. Now, at the same time, I want to be able to jot down the materials I need to build for this lemonade stand. So to multitask, all I do is press the home button, and boom, I get picture in picture. You can think of it as a kind of automatic multi-window. I can get it out of the way, I can launch keep, I can add some more materials, so I know I need to get some uh, wood glue, like so. Then, brilliant. <laughs> Picture in Picture lets you do more with your phone. It works great when video calling with Duo. For example, maybe I need to check my calendar while planning a barbecue with friends. And there are lots of other great use cases. For example, Picture in Picture for maps navigation or watching Netflix in the background and a lot more. Another great feature in O that helps make your experience more fluid is autofill. Now, if you use Chrome, you're probably already familiar with autofill for quickly filling out a username and password or credit card information with a single tap. So let's say I'm setting up a new phone for the first time, and I open Twitter, and I want to log in. Now, because I use Twitter.com all the time on Chrome, this system will automatically suggest my username. I can simply tap it, I get my password, and then, boom, I'm logged in. It's pretty awesome. I can double tap anywhere on the phrase Old Coffee House, and all of it is select for me. No more fiddling around with text selection handles. So we're doing two things to help. First, I'm excited to announce that we're creating a specialized version of TensorFlow, Google's open source machine learning library, which we call TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow Lite will leverage a new neural network API to tap into silicon-specific accelerators. And over time, we expect to see DSPs specifically designed for neural network inference and training. 
We think these new capabilities will help our next generation of on-device speech processing, visual search, augmented reality, and more. So here you can see Play Protect has recently scanned all your apps. No problems found. That's Google Play Protect. It's available out of the box on every Android device with Google Play. Some apps were running in the background, and they were consuming tons of system resources, especially draining battery. So in O, we're adding wise limits to background location and background execution. The now, imagine if developers could also have a powerful profiler to visualize what's happening inside the app. But there is one more thing. One thing we think would be an incredible compliment to the story, and it is one thing our team has never done for developers. We have never added a new programming language to Android. And today, we're making Kotlin an officially supported language in Android. So. I am so happy uh, JetBrains CEO Max Shafarov is here today. Memory is an expensive component. So we're making a number of optimizations to the system UI and the kernel to allow an Android O device built with the Go configuration to run smoothly with as little as 512 megabytes to one gigabyte of memory. And now we're making the savings more visible here in the UI. In aggregate, this feature is saving users over 750 terabytes of data every day. One example is right here on Play's homepage. To be eligible for these new sections, we published a set of best practices called Building for Billions, which includes recommendations we've seen make a big difference in the consumer experience. We look forward to seeing what you'll build and how we can bring computing to the next several billion users. And that means it works anywhere. There's no setup, there's no cameras to install, and with it, you really feel like you're there. Now, just as we did with Daydream Ready smartphones, we're taking a platform approach with standalone headsets, Pokemon Go. The app gave us a glimpse of AR, and it showed us just how cool it can be to have digital objects show up in our world. Well, we've been working in this space since 2013 with Tango, a sensing technology that enables devices to understand space more like we do. And we've all had that moment when you're struggling to find that one weird random screwdriver thing. Well, imagine in the future, your phone could just take you to that exact screwdriver and point it out to you on the shelf. Mapping, computer vision, distributed computing, and we think precise location will be critical for camera-based interfaces. While job seekers may be looking for openings right next door, there is a big disconnect here. Just like we focused our contributions to teachers and students, but as we started working on this, we realized the first step for many people when they start looking for a job is searching on Google. And you're from Pittsburgh. We understand that. You can scroll down and click into this immersive experience, and we immediately start showing the most relevant jobs for you. And you can filter, you can choose full time, and as you can see, you can drill down easily. I want to look at jobs which were posted in the past three days, so you can do that. I'm searching and organizing information to AI and machine learning. It's been a busy morning. You know, we've talked about this important shift from a mobile first to an AI first world so that all of you can build powerful experiences for new users everywhere. It'll take all of us working together to bring the benefits of technology to everyone. I believe we are on the verge of solving some of the most important problems we face. Enjoy Google I.O. Yeah.